This is the uh, most difficult part of the presentation, is making sure that the phone actually comes up onto the screen. So I'm off to a good start. So what I'm going to show you here today is CR2's electronic wallet. And you know, this application that we have here is being powered by the Bankworld platform. So it's not just about the user experience that we're going to be showing you here, but it's also about the platform that's behind it. And this is where we bring all those payment capabilities, we bring all those remittance capabilities, and all of the, the advanced functions together. And then as you as a bank, you'll be able to launch across all the different lines of business that you have uh, an application that will really serve those customers in a very convenient way. Now the first thing it's all about, as Maeve was saying, onboarding customers. You have to make that frictionless. You have to be able to do it even in a staged way as well. So you don't want to put too much red tape in front of the customers, asking them to get passports, utility bills, and so on. You want to really give them the opportunity just to download the app and get registered very quickly. And then as they start to go through the KYC process, which will be determined by the regulatory obligations by your banks, as they go through different levels of that, you can start unlocking services. And this is a very important part. So as you see on this screen here, this is just an example of, of what your home dashboard would look like. Uh, in this environment here, if a user has already registered, they can just go straight away, they can log in. If they want to register and open up an account, as Maeve was saying, you can go through a very frictionless onboarding process. And I'll do that later on on the, the, the presentation. But for this user that I'm going to log in, which is myself, I've already enabled the facial recognition. And this will bring the customer in in a frictionless way straight into their accounts. Now, as you see on the screen, I've still to go through a number of KYC steps. But I'm going to do that at my own convenience. But what I wanted to do straight away was be able to see what the app looks like, see what functionalities I'm going to get. And then as I'm going through the various different levels of KYC, I can fill that out at my convenience. So on this dashboard here, we're bringing the most common functionalities together. First off, we're showing the customer the account. So I, I can click on this account here. I can see any transactions that I did recently. I can go in and select any of these transactions. I can go and generate a receipt. If this was a payment I was making to a friend and it was overseas, I can just download that receipt and send it directly from my phone uh, using WhatsApp messaging. So it's a very convenient starting point for, for the customer. But another thing customers need to be able to do, and this has to be instantaneously, is to be able to top up their accounts. So on this screen here, in the middle of the screen, I have a top up button. And then again, depending on the region, depending on where the customer is located, you know, if they're uh, in a, a rural area, they might be doing this from a USSD phone, for example. In this case, I'm going to top up using a friend request to ask them to send me some money. So I'm going to select the option at the top of the screen here to request money. Now, the great thing about this is I can actually hold, and I'm going to show you this as well, uh, multi-currency accounts. Uh, and this basically allows me to even request a currency. So I'm going to se uh, select Ave in this case. I can actually request money from a friend in my preferred currency. And multi-currency is so, so important, particularly with people transacting online. So if you look at the McKinsey report that I read recently across Africa, for example, there's going to be an explosion in uptake in online payments. And a lot of that is down to the fact that customers today, tra traditionally, they're not really trusting merchants online. They don't like to give out their details. But with the likes of these virtual cards and disposable cards as well, that takes that away. That, it's peace of mind for the consumer. They can go and just make a payment. They can select the particular currency that they want to do that payment in if they're uh, trading over, over borders. And then when the transaction is done, the card can dissolve, can just dis disappear. You can even put timers on it as well. So you can keep it going for a month, for example. And that will help achieve that uh, you know, explosion in the uh, payments across Africa, the online payments. So in this case here, I'm just going to go and use the plus and minus button here you know, to come up with a, a value that I want to request from Ava in this particular case. And I'm going to select a particular account. In this particular case, I've got a number of different positions across different currencies. But I'm just going to let this go directly into my, my regular account. And then I can just press the request money and then press confirm. 
and then a transaction is now going to be generated. And instantaneously, this has now gone to the recipient as a notification. And we support all the notification channels. The most popular one these days is obviously push notifications. So what I'll do to complete this transaction, I'm going to just come out of this user. I'll just sign in. And I'm going to go in as the person called Ava, who was the uh, person I requested the money from. And her name is Ava G. And I'm going to put in her password. And when I log in, if I put the details in correctly, I will be able to see, again, Ava's wallet. So in this case, Ava, uh, she's got a little photograph at the top of the screen there. But be right beside that photograph, there is that little bell that we're all familiar with. And this is the payment request, the other side of the payment request. Remember, Bankworld, the platform is behind all of this, making it happen. So as soon as I actually requested the money, it went into a queue. Ava was notified on a push notification. And now she's going to go and complete the other part of the transaction. In this case, she can come in here and select the account that she'd like to transfer the money from, and then press the Continue button and confirm to make that payment a success. And there are nice positive feedback showing the user that the transaction has been completed. And on the other side of that, Patrick, in my case, has got the money directly sent into the account. So let me go back and show you that. And I want to show you some other capabilities, particularly around the payments ecosystem that we have. Like if you look in the Dashim Bank, the Amole project in Ethiopia, it's very, very successful. The huge growth in, in, in consumers using it. But a lot of that is around to the fact how easy it is to make customers be able to do payments. So one of the capabilities that we've got within our platform is all around QR codes. And this is a great way, let's say you're out having a meal and you want to share the meal and you just uh, say to your friend, okay, the bill is going to be uh, you know, 20 euro or 25 euro, put in the amount. And as you see, as I'm clicking through this, increasing it, this is generating a real-time QR code uh, which I can then go and scan from another phone. So in this case, I've got another phone here. It's not up on the screen, but I can just log in as the person and then scan the QR code and the transaction will be completed. So again, it's a really, really powerful way of doing person-to-person uh, -person payments. But in this day and age around contactless payments, this is really where the future is at. And our cards that are built into the application here automatically support contactless. And this is great because what the customer can actually do is on the screen, if they go to their uh, main card, they can actually enable NFC. So if I go back to my, my screen here and go back to my uh, NFC uh, screen at the, at the very beginning, you can see on my phone here, I've got my list of my cards. I've got all my card details. I can control those as well. I can even generate a new virtual prepaid card. And I can also control this card as well. So this is really useful because cards are used a lot more in the context of a family, so where the parent might issue a virtual disposable car or card to their, their daughter, and, and then they might want to manage the transactions around that, you know, making sure that there's certain spending limits uh, associated with it as well. Uh, but you could also, as a parent, you could lock it down to types of merchants. So in this case here, we're showing all the different merchant types. And you can say, well, for the card that my daughter has, I don't want her to be able to use that, obviously, in places like casinos. I could even stop it from being used in online purchases as well. And I could just lock it down to you know, domestic transfers or domestic payments. So again, it's a very important part of our proposition, is giving the security in the hands of the end users. You know, uh, if a card is compromised online, you don't want customers having to ring up the bank and you know, going into a queue and, and stopping the card. Or maybe a customer has just forgot where they left their card. And you don't want to you know, get customers to block the cards permanently. You might want to just let them freeze it. So in this case here, I've just successfully frozen my card. It can't be used. I can have peace of mind. I can go and have my breakfast. And then later on, I can go and check that I leave it in the car or that I leave it in a friend's house. And at that point, I can just enable it again. So again, very useful facilities that we got built in to the, the mobile app. Um, also, in terms of the, the card capabilities that we have in CR2, I showed you already the top-up capabilities, but contactless, this is a really important part. So what I'm going to do now 
is by sliding this button, I'm going to be enabling contacts pay uh, contactless payments. And I can set a pin for this card as well. And if the customer has registered for facial recognition as well, they can use facial recognition for this. But I want to set a pin for this card, so anytime I use it, whether it's virtually or physically, if I get it uh, produced, I'll be able to enable that and use that pin. So here's an example of that scenario where I'm going to go and make a payment at uh, a merchant. I might be buying some grocery goods. And here, I can bring up the contactless capabilities and make the payment directly. Now, this is where our partners come into play here because the technology that we're using here is using NFC, and that's all around tokenization. We need to tokenize these cards. We need to enable those tokenized cards in the phones as well. Now, although I'm demonstrating this from a, an iPhone, uh, this capability is what you would get on an Android-based phone because Apple have locked down the ecosystem. You know, we can provision these cards into an electronic wallet, you know, the Apple wallet or the Google Pay uh, wallet. But for this uh, scenario here where you want customers to be able to directly use these cards on NFCs, you can implement this in your bank. Because as you all know, Apple and Google Play are not everywhere. You know, I believe in Africa, they're starting off in South Africa. I think there are, there's some uh, countries up in North Africa they're going to. But you don't have to wait until they get to your doorstep. You can go and use this capability to enable it for your customers now. And if your customers at some point want to use Apple Pay or Google Play when it comes into place, you can also allow them to provision into those phones as well, into that, that ecosystem as well. So that's just some examples of the capabilities. I showed you the card controls, but obviously customers need to be able to make payments for, you know, not just sending money to their friends, uh, their family, but they also need to be able to pay their bills. And within our platform, we can go and we can connect to any payments ecosystem. Uh, we can, like in a mole, they're uh, selling content on the actual uh, mobile phones. They can even check out and pay for their airline, their Ethiopian airline tickets as well. And that's what it's all about today, because, you know, in the past, banks were always focusing on inward-facing payments. You know, those payments and transactions that were to do with the bank's core banking system and back-end systems they have. But today, it's all about outward-facing payments. So giving those traditional services, but also allowing you to tap into payment ecosystems that are way outside of your bank. Or even having the capability to link in a fintech there might be a particular product or a particular service that you don't specialize in, but you want to partner with a, a, a processor for that. And then you can bring those in through our API infrastructure and allow them to uh, provide their services through your mobile app. So that's just a very high level. I think I've covered most of it, Maeve. So I'm going to hand back over to Maeve yeah, uh, to finish off this Yeah, fantastic. Thanks section. so much, Patrick. Okay. Nice.